Wherever did my fool brother run off to? I explicitly told him I wanted him here when we welcome our guests. It would seem Prince Roland shrugged off the King's Guard and went on a little excursion, as he's wont to do. I swear it's as if the boy exists to drive us mad. He is an embarrassment to our family. No matter. I will see to matters myself. Your honored guests have arrived, Your Highness. I see new faces among them. I trust you can tell me more, Clarice. But of course, Your Highness. The imposing-looking woman over there is General Avlora of Esfrost. Her prowess in battle is such that some say she is the second coming of Groma Ironfist, hero of the Salt Iron War. If the rumors of her strength are true, she is more likely to emerge victorious than any but the Dawnspear himself. Over there is Minister Exham Marshall of the Holy State of Hyzant. He is the newest appointee to the Saintly Seven, and has been placed in charge of the military and diplomatic affairs. Tis a rise to prominence nigh unheard of for one so young. A general of the Grand Duchy and Hyzant's young hope. I imagine this will not be the last I hear of them. I know this man. Source the end of Hyzant, yes? Just so, my lord. As you doubtless know, he is the Holy State's Minister of Salt. A prestigious position, though it is said he feels threatened by Minister Exham of late. So even the great monolith that is the Holy State is not a me. They will be joining the festivities in Archduke Gustadolf's stead. Word has it that Lord Thallus has been appointed Prime Minister, which would make him the second most influential individual in all of Esfrost. Archduke Gustadolf is said to prize freedom more than anything. It would seem that includes the freedom to put his own family above all. With all due respect, Your Highness, the decisions of another nation are their own. Do take care not to say anything that might offend our new allies. You need not remind me, Patriot. I know there is little to be gained from quarreling with Esfrost's ruling family. Honored guests, I am Franny, Crown Prince of Glenbrook. It is an honor to welcome you to our kingdom in my father's stead. I can assure you we have spared no effort in preparing for tomorrow's festivities. Let us ring in this new age of alliance together. Though I imagine some may be too occupied awing us with their prowess in the tourney to enjoy the revelry themselves. Allow me to escort you to Whiteholm Castle, where the ceremony will take place, whenever you're ready. Prince Roland, finally you return. At ease, Huet. I trust all was well in my absence. Well enough. Another visit to the Woolfort Domain, was it? Indeed, on minor business. My apologies for leaving unannounced. Apologies indeed. You know full well that I am under strict orders from your father to accompany you on any excursions outside the castle. I'm perfectly capable of taking care of myself. Besides, 
No one would lose any sleep if something happened to me. Father and Franny least of all. Even Cordelia would get along perfectly fine without her brother. Well, I would not. Or have you forgotten that you are my one and only sworn liege? You act. Forgive me, truly. It won't happen again. I should hope not. So it is true that you plan to fight an attorney on the morrow. And alongside House Wolfort, no less. How did you... His Grace told me, when he commanded me to keep you out of trouble. So Father knew all along. And so I have decided to fight at your side. You won't be slipping away on my watch this time. As you wish. Welcome back, the both of you. Were there any troubles while we were out? None to speak of, aside from Eridor here. But what else is new? Out with it, Benedict! I heard you were beset by brigands. Is the young lord safe? Lower your voice. Must you always shout so? Or can't you see that it was that big mouth of yours that invited trouble in the first place? There is no cause for concern, Eridor. Besides, I'm not a child anymore. Mayhap not, my lord. But I've known you since you were knee-high to a... Uh... <sighs> and this must be the young lord's bride-to-be. I am Frederica. It is a pleasure and honor to meet you all. And I am Gila, her attendant. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Allow me to introduce those in service of House Wolfort. This is Aridor, Master at Arms and Commander of our military forces. You'll be the Lady of House Wolfort. No harm will befall you as long as I'm around. And this is Anna, my right hand. If you require anything, just say the word. They may not be of my blood, but they are my family just the same. And from this day on, they're your... I am aware that in all of Glenbrook, House Wolfort is second only to the royal family in power and influence. I will do my best not to disappoint you. A joyous day this is! The little lord grew up and found himself the perfect bride! Nigh brings a tear to my eye. His voice certainly does carry. Sorry, my lady, but you'll have to get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> my lord, your father awaits you in his chambers. As for me, I must stay and discuss the preparations for tomorrow's festivities with Anna and Eridor. Lady Frederica, pray come with me. Father is expecting us. As you are well aware, 
There are two events of utmost importance to be conducted before Lord Serenoa and his bride are wed. The ceremony to commemorate the joint mining venture. Still can't believe I'll be seeing the day when we break ground on a new mine right here in Glenbrook. And with the full support of S-Frost and Hyzant, no less. You can thank King Regna for that. It was by his most wise and generous proposal that the three nations of Norzelia now strive toward a common goal. Needless to say, delegates from each nation will be joining in the festivities. From the Grand Duchy of Esfrost, Lord Dragan Esfrost, who is overseeing the technical side of the mining operations. The Holy State of Hyzant will be represented by Minister Lila Viscraft of the Saintly Seven. And our own Lord Simon will serve as Glenbrook's delegate and meet with the two before the ceremony, yes? Quite so. After that, it will be House Wolfort's responsibility to see that our honored guests feel welcome. Anna, I would trust you safeguarding both Lord Dragan and Minister Lila. Consider it done. Then once that stuffy ceremony is over, we can get to the real highlight of the day, the tourney. Ah, my blood's already rushing, just envisioning the greatest warriors from all the realm clashing swords. From Esfrost, the much-renowned General of Laura. And from Hyzant, Minister Exham Marshall. I have heard much of his prowess as well. Then, of course, there's our reigning victor, the pride of Glenbrook, Sir Maxwell the Dawnspear. Still, I wish him all the best of luck against their hosts. They'll need it to beat House Wolfort. On that matter, there are two things I should make clear. Prince Roland has expressed a desire to join the tourney as a member of House Wolfort's contingent. Why would the boy want to fight with us and not his own arms master? Apparently, he originally formally requested to do just that, but King Regna would not allow it. And so he came to the young lord in hopes of finding another way in. Well, it's more than welcome in my book. The royal family said we're free to put together our own contingent after all. I reckon his majesty would be beside himself with joy if we could deliver a beaten to Esfrost and Hyzant. Doubtless so. Very well. I shall inform the prince that he is welcome in our ranks. Finally, there is the matter of Lord Simon's health. Indeed. Sadly, the Lord of the House is in no condition to participate in the tourney. Barring some miracle, I anticipate that Lord Saranoa will have to fight in his Lord Father's stead. Lord Simon. I suppose age takes its toll on even the mightiest of men. So be it then. You can leave watching over the young lord and Prince Roland to me. Good. I remind you that while this is a joyous occasion, all of our attendees have their own reasons for coming. Let us not give them an opportunity to catch us unaware. Father, I bring to you my betrothed, the Lady Frederica. A pleasure to meet you, my lord. I am Frederica of House Esfrost. Ho ho, the pleasure is all mine. Were it not for the efforts of House Wolfort, 
The Salt Iron War would rage on still today. I do not deserve the honor of joining your esteemed family, but I will endeavor to serve you all the same. <laughs> there is no need for such formalities, my girl. You are tired from your journey, I am sure. Pray rest easy tonight. Thank you, my lord. I believe that in any journey, the first step is the most important. Before we go forward together, I should like to know why you chose to welcome one of Roselle in blood, such as I. Oh, -ho, I'd heard you were a strong-willed one. Pray forgive my insolence. Uh, and yet, I am set to marry into a mighty house of a foreign nation. I should like to know what you wish of me, that I might live up to your expectations. A most reasonable request. Both of you, listen well. Yes, Father. Your marriage was agreed upon by Glenbrook and S. Frost, that the ties between our two nations might be strengthened. To give us more leverage against Tizant with their monopoly over salt. Precisely. With Glenbrook and S. Frost consolidating their power, Tizant was left with little choice but to join the Alliance. And yet, while Lady Frederica is indeed the Archduke's sister, at the same time she is the daughter of a Rosellan concubine. And House Walford, for all our military prowess, is no more than a bannerman of the King. If the aim was to forge the strongest bond we could between our two nations... It would be far more appropriate for my sister, Lady Erica, to wed the Crown Prince of Glenbrook. Just so, yet neither nation chose that. And do you know why? So that if relations between our two countries were to take a turn for the worse... We could be cast away like pawns. Precisely. Such are the schemes of those who rule nations. <sighs> and yet, no matter how impure the intentions behind this arrangement may be, I will not bring dishonor to the Wolfort name. Well said, my son. If that is your decision, then... <gasps> Father! Lord Simon! <sighs> I am an old man, and my health is not what it once was. For this reason and more, I have made my decision. As of this day, I abdicate my position as Lord of House Wolfort. You will serve in my stead from tomorrow forth, my son. But, Father, I am not ready to... My decision is not made lightly. You have already shown me, with your words and your deeds, that you are more than ready. Think always about what your subjects need from you. Weigh your choices carefully, then take action. Do so, and I have no doubt you will make a great lord. And trust in Benedict. He shall serve you as well as he did me. Thank you, Father. I will spare no effort that one day I may be as beloved by our people as you. Lady Frederica, your fate is not a simple one. There are many who would try to use the both of you as pawns in their own schemes. Even so, I hope that you will be there to support my son through it all as his wife, but also as your own person. 
This is House Wolfort's entreaty and the wish of a father. Of course, my lord. It was my intention from the moment I boarded the ship. Beg pardon, my lord, but Lord Jagan and Minister Lila have arrived. Very well. Presiding over tonight's banquet will be my final duty as Lord of the House. Tomorrow's ceremony will mark the beginning of yours, my son. And after that will be your wedding. Rest well tonight, both of you, for busy days lie ahead. Ha 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 ha!